And hello and welcome to the show. I am Joe Top at. It's been a long time since I talked about the Peanuts character. So I decided to conduct a poll to see which character you guys wanted me to talk about. The first poll ended in a tie between Pigpen and Linus. So I conducted a tie break and poll. Linus won. I will talk about the other characters in future videos. But for right now, I'm going to talk about Charlie Brown's blanket tote and friend. Let's begin. Linus's creation goes back to when Schultz was working as an instructor at the Art Instruction Schools Incorporated in Minneapolis. In his own words, Linus came from a drawing that I made one day of a face almost like the one he now has. I experimented with some wild hair and showed the sketch to a friend of mine who sat near me at the art instruction whose name was Linus Moore. It seemed appropriate that I should name the character Linus. Linus Moore would later become a successful cartoonist in his own right. He would maintain a friendship with Schultz, often getting together with him for coffee Moore passed away in 2016, after battling Parkinson's disease and heart disease. Like Schroeder, Linus would make his debut as a baby. Even though he was mentioned on July 14, 1952, Linus wouldn't make his first appearance until September 19, 1952. My baby brother can sit up. Really? All by himself? Almost. I only had to prop him up a little bit. Uh, Lucy, that's not a little bit. That's a lot. Three days later, Linus would officially be named. What's your baby brother's name, Lucy? Linus, isn't that a coincidence? Both our names begin with... With, begin with, they both begin with B, K, R, D. I believe the letter you're looking for is L. Much like Schroeder, Schultz would age Linus over time to where he became the same age as Charlie Brown, though for a time he was a little younger. One of the things people remember most about Linus is the fact that he carries around a blanket. The idea originated when Schultz noticed that three of his five kids carried around blankets. So he decided to give Linus a security blanket on June 1st, 1954. The term security blanket is actually coined by this strip. Throughout the years, Linus's blanket has become a source of annoyance for some of the other characters. Mostly Lucy, their unseen grandma, and to a lesser extent, Rerun. Lucy and Grandma often tried to force Linus to get rid of his blanket. He always goes through withdrawal, but in the end, he always gets his blanket back. There have been occasions over the years where Linus did get rid of his habit of carrying his blanket. Once, he gave it to Snoopy to keep. When Linus tries to get it back from him, Snoopy turned it into two sports coats for himself and Woodstock. Linus wakes up one day and finds he no longer needs his blanket, only to have Charlie Brown buy him a replacement. The second time, Linus tried to start his own support group for kids trying to give up their blankets. His only patient is Sally, who ends up getting Linus back in the habit. Linus's blanket is usually colored blue. Though there was one episode in the Charlie Brown and Snoopy show where it was colored green, this was possibly an animation error. 
In the rarely seen special celebrating CBS, Linus's blanket was colored orange. It also seems that Linus's blanket has a mind of its own, having attacked Lucy a few times. One of the big run on gags and peanuts involves Snoopy trying to take Linus's blanket. Oftentimes, Linus is still holding on to it while Snoopy is running. Why does Snoopy want Linus's blanket? Even Schultz didn't know. I always assumed that Snoopy was just being playful, but that's my interpretation. Linus loves to suck his thumb while holding his blanket. You would think that this would make him the most childish character in Peanuts, but that's not the case. Linus is actually a lot more mature than the others. He can quote the Bible, and he seems to have read many books that are beyond his years. Yes, I'm aware that other characters like Marcy read advanced books, but my point is that Linus, despite carrying a blanket, is pretty mature. Schultz often said that each of the characters represents a side to him. Linus is his philosophical side. Linus doesn't really care what anyone else thinks of his blanket. In fact, he uses it like a whip. Why would anyone want Linus to give up his blanket? It makes a really good weapon. He doesn't really carry the blanket in the later years of the strip. Schultz stated in some interviews that Linus outgrew his blanket. Though it still made appearances in the specials and even in the strip from time to time. For a time in the 60s, Linus wore glasses, though this was eventually dropped. Now for the big question, where did Linus's belief in the Great Pumpkin come from? Charles Schultz one day was thinking about the holidays. He wondered what would happen if a kid got his holidays confused. He started to think about Halloween and Christmas. Since Christmas had Santa Claus, Halloween would have the Great Pumpkin. He picked Linus to have a belief in the Great Pumpkin because the character was still younger than the others at the time. Linus waiting for the Great Pumpkin in the most sincere pumpkin patch would become a Halloween staple. Basically, all the Halloween strips and peanuts would involve the Great Pumpkin in some way. Many have viewed the Great Pumpkin as a metaphor for God or religion in general. Linus would act like a Jehovah's Witness in later years when it comes to the Great Pumpkin. One girl even called him a false prophet. It's true that Schultz loved to talk about religion, specifically Christianity, and Peanuts. However, he always maintained that Linus was just confusing Halloween with Christmas. You can make the argument that the Great Pumpkin might have became a metaphor for God, though I have my doubts about that. However, the first storyline involving the Great Pumpkin makes it clear that Linus is just confusing Halloween with Christmas. Linus's belief in the Great Pumpkin often isolates him from the others. Charlie Brown even makes fun of him at the end of the first Great Pumpkin storyline. Linus never seems to go out trick-or-treating with the others, nor does he seem to go to Halloween parties. He was able to convince others to sit with him in the pumpkin patch, like Sally, Marcy, and Peppermint Patty, but they always end in disaster. Snoopy would serve as Linus's only follower, though he does it to get a cookie rather than because he believes in the great pumpkin. 
Linus' belief even cost him the election for school president. Even though Linus states that he was starting at the bottom the first time he asked Charlie Brown to be friends, he would become Charlie Brown's closest friend. One of the most iconic images from Peanuts is Linus and Charlie Brown leaning against the wall talking. This often involves them talking about their problems. Linus often offers Charlie Brown advice and often defends him against the other kids, mostly Lucy. Sometimes I wonder why Charlie Brown even bothers going to Lucy for advice. Linus seems to understand him better, and he doesn't charge five cents. Speaking of Lucy, Linus' relationship with his older sister can be scary. Whenever she's in a bad mood, Linus avoids her at all costs. She often makes him do things for her by threatening to punch him. Despite this, Linus does love her as seen in this classic strip. As for Rerun, I never really got a sense of their relationship. Lucy is around him more than Linus ever was. I guess they get along, but it's kind of hard to say. Linus is also one of the few characters outside of Charlie Brown to have a last name, Van Pelt. Now it's time to talk about Sally's unrequited love for Linus. It's one of the most well-known unrequited loves in Peanuts. Yet surprisingly, Linus expressed interest in dating her in this early strip. Sally's love for Linus all started when she walked for the first time. Look, it's Charlie Brown's little sister. And she's walking, she's walking, she's walking, she's walking. Isn't he the cutest thing? I'm guessing she fell in love with him because of all the fuss he made about her walking. Sally's love for Linus would often be a source of annoyance for him. He never expressed any interest in her outside this early strip. Sally would often call him her sweet baboo, to which he would yell, I am not your sweet baboo. He seems to have the ability to know when she says it, even when he's nowhere in sight. The term sweet baboo originated from a nickname Schultz's second wife Jeannie gave him. It's hard to say if this was his way of saying he hated the nickname, or he just thought it would be funny to have Sally call Linus her sweet baboo. We find out later that sweet baboo is an old brown family expression. Most of the unrequited loves found in Peanuts are between characters who are kids. The only exception to this rule is Linus' love for his teacher, Miss Arthmore. I guess it makes sense that Linus would fall in love with his teacher. He's basically an intellectual after all. Unlike other unrequited loves, this one would come to an end, though Linus would still have great admiration for Miss Arthmore. Linus would later express interest in a girl named Truffles, who seemed to return his feelings, making this one of the few loves that wasn't unrequited. He also had interest in a girl named Mimi in the special It Was My Best Birthday Ever Charlie Brown. She seemed to like him too. Another girl that Linus happened to like was Mary Jo from Someday You'll Find Her Charlie Brown. The interesting thing about her is that she too carried a blanket with her. Then there was Melody Melody from You're in the Super Bowl, Charlie Brown. There was also Janice from Why Charlie Brown Why, though I think they were only meant to be friends rather than boyfriend and girlfriend. 
He would also express interest in a girl named Lydia, but that's a subject for another video. Peanuts producer Lee Mendelssohn referred to Linus as his favorite character. He loved the fact that even though Linus sucked his thumb and carried a blanket, he was very intelligent. This might explain why Linus appeared in more animated specials and movies than the other characters. With the exception of Charlie Brown and Snoopy, who appeared in all of them. The only specials Linus doesn't appear in is What a Nightmare Charlie Brown, and It's the Girl in the Red Truck Charlie Brown. His most iconic moment was when he quoted the Gospel of Luke and A Charlie Brown Christmas. Bill Melendez was against doing it, but Schultz insisted we should be thankful he did. This moment has been referenced and parodied a lot over the years. Linus has had a lot of memorable moments in the specials and movies. For the sake of time, I'll go over some of my favorites. First, when he reassured Charlie Brown at the end of A Boy Named Charlie Brown, whipping the bullies and race for your life, Charlie Brown, confronting Violette and Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown, I always thought he was brave and refusing to leave, despite her warning. Leading the Thanksgiving prayer in the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, his belief in the Easter Beagle and it's the Easter Beagle, Charlie Brown, he was actually right on this one. Running for student body president and you're not elected, Charlie Brown. And the best one was when he confronted the bully for making fun of his friend Janice and why Charlie Brown why. This was the only time in either the specials or the movies Linus was without his blanket. This was due to the fact that the special dealt with a serious topic, cancer. It was felt that Linus shouldn't have his blanket due to the serious nature of the special. Seeing how angry Linus was at the bully and how Linus can use his blanket as a whip, it might have been for the best he didn't have his blanket. Linus could have killed him. Thanks for watching. If there are any Peanuts characters you wish me to talk about, let me know in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later.